Yo, yo, yo. Welcome back to That's Fire. I know I look like a fucking Coke dealer right now. The hair's flowing. Finally got my hair cut. I don't know if I've not worn a hat any episode of this. I got the Hawaiian unbuttoned. Only reason it is unbuttoned because it's missing buttons. And the gold chain. And the gold hoops, actually. So again, we're not fucking around. I'm off about an eight ball of cocaine. And we're getting ready to talk some Drake and Kanye. Um, let's fucking get into it, eh? All right, I'm not I'm not off the coke. I'm not off the coke. I was I was JKing, bro, but the fit is fire. I'm still on my kitchen floor because it's impossible to get a reasonable price shit in New York City. Shit being um, furniture. This afternoon, I will be walking like 30 minutes to a place, though, to see if anything can be done there. I uh, guess we'll just keep talking about my life to start the show. I uh, I am I've been I've been sitting on the floor on a moving blanket for like 20 days. Like almost three weeks. Because I don't want to spend a lot of money on furniture. And because I'd rather spend that money on drinks this weekend, you know. But I'm going to go check out like a real cheap place that I saw on the interwebs that apparently will get you your shit relatively quick. I just got to check the pricing on, on some stuff like a futon or like a little. All I need is like a dining room table for like two you know, it's just me here in this apartment. I don't, know, I don't know why I need a four person table, two person table, a futon. I got some friends visiting this weekend. One of them staying with me. They're going to need a fucking place to sleep, you know, other than the floor, even though I'd give them my bed. That's how good of a host I am. But anyway, that's fire. Episode seven. We're back and we have a motherfucking show down. Between Kanye and Drake. Kanye is entirely unhinged. He is a fucking whack, wacko, whack job. Uh, Gossips and deals with beef like a little girl. Is allegedly dropping Donna this week. He's doing his third uh, release party. In Chicago this time, in the hometown, if you're a Kanye fan that's excited, he's he's building his old, his mom's house where he grew up with his mom, albums dedicated to his mom. So again, I hate to troll on him or this album, but he's fucking doing it to himself. Hate to do that because it's named after literally his mother, Donda. But when you come at my guy, Drizzy Drake, Champagne Poppy, the sixth god, your fucking daddy. I'm gonna have to show out. So, my completely unbiased, biased opinion Drake is going to fucking murder Kanye in whatever ends up happening that comes out of this beef. So let me let me start. Let me start from the top. At least not from the top top, but let me start with what is what has been going on the last month or so, you know, right around the time that Kanye, um, this whole Donda shit really started. And I mean, Kanye has been used, has been like using all these fake release dates as promo. And on top of that, he's like starting this beef with Drake, which you could say is for promo, even though I don't know if he needs it. But he needs it. He doesn't need it for like his own good. But he needs it if he wants to compete with Drake. Because Drake will win the numbers game no matter what, right? But let's start from the top. This is an article from Complex that does a great job of like timelining the whole thing out. So July 24th, which I believe was like the week or the day at... uh, so it was a day after his first release date of July 23rd. Um, one of his boys, Consequence, 
tweets we're looking for the drake drop date and then tweets at swizz the real swizz on twitter who's one of drake's boys line it up so literally within a day of the the original release date he's tweeting at drake drag drake's guys where's so that so that they can drop it on the on the same day Kanye wants to drop it on the same day so he thinks he can put away drake which is just not true not true at all but kanye is just a fucking loser man honestly fucking loser so after that Drake sends a warning to Kanye. Honestly, this gets a little run out, so I'm going to skip through that. But he was basically like, uh, certified lover boys on the way, and that's for anyone in the way. Obviously, directed Kanye. And then Kanye, on the second release party, added some lyrics that said, move out of the way of my release. Um. Drake is nowhere in the way of your release, bro. You were supposed to put the album out a week ago. And before that, you're supposed to put the album out a year ago. So um, Drake's in your kitchen, buddy. Drake's in your fucking kitchen. Um, After that, the two entourages get into a little Instagram commenting thing, just confirming it again, just kind of like whack Instagram bullshit stuff. Um, and then this last week, which is when, which is what, which is really the main reason I'm talking about it, that kind of took it to the next level, right? Is uh, Trippy Red's album. Trippy Red put out his album, and it featured a song that had a Drake feature on it, called "Betrayal." And in that song, um, Drake takes some shots at Kanye, as expected, you know. Drake is about that on, on when it comes to the rapping, right? He said, all these fools I'm beefing that I barely know, 45, 44, let it go. You ain't, change, you ain't changing shit for me. It's set in stone. Kanye, Pusha T, Consequence, they're all 44 years old. Um, Drake is like 34. And he says, you ain't changing shit for me. It's set in stone. So honestly, it's like he's taking shots at them, but he's really addressing the um, all the rumors that he's waiting for Kanye, which really started from Kanye. Kanye just fixated that. Is Sure, Drake was supposed to drop Certified Lover Boy a little bit ago and then said the album was coming this summer. But like, what, why would Drake like be concerned with Kanye really though like Kanye is huge Drake is bigger Drake has no reason to be concerned with a Kanye release date and honestly that is not what Kanye wants Kanye thinks that if he puts it out on the same day as Drake that he would like get more streams or something that's a fuck no buddy also I already know that Drake Drake has like a probably a timeline in view and maybe we're in that timeline right now, but I already know after all this shit that Drake is going to Drake is going to have a song on there that is going to fucking go at Kanye and these fucking clowns. They're clowns. They're clowns. So yeah, I'm sure if you're a Kanye fan, you're already like out on me. You don't even know who I am, but like, hey, listen, you being a Kanye fan is is similar to like the girl or a guy in an abusive relationship always coming back, right? Kanye is just constantly fucked with you for the last like five years. I mean, uh, Donda was supposed to come out July, 2020, a year ago, pushed it back, said he was still working on it, went fucking ghost, right? Then it was supposed to come out in July. Then it's supposed to come out in August. Now it's supposed to come out uh, this week. Like, and you guys just keep coming back for more. The people just want the music, Kanye. Quit fucking around. Also, all you fans, fuck you. Fuck you guys, for real. Fucking I. Fucking clowns, bro. Fuck. 
No, but um, Drake takes those shots at Kanye, and then Kanye goes fucking Joker and posts a screenshot on Instagram. He gets he kind of starts to get active on Instagram, posts the whole Joker thing in a group chat, which presumably has Drake in it. And people are presuming that Virgil Abloh is in it because there's a V and one of the previous text messages implies that it could have been Vir- Virgil. So it, it seems like some sort of like industry group chat, right? That like Drake is in and Kanye is in. I don't know why they'd be in a group chat together. Maybe it's something that just hasn't been visited in forever. But Kanye goes, I live for this. I've been fucked with by nerd ass jocks like you my whole life. You will never recover. I promise you with the picture of the Joker. So basically confirming that Kanye is unhinged and uh, bothered by literally just a bar that Drake had in a feature. And so he decides to go full joke. I mean, man, just L after L for Kanye really is. And in that, in like the screenshot of the messages, it says that Kanye added Pusha T to the conversation. And that has to be the funniest thing about this whole uh, this whole se- segment segment of the beef. This whole portion of the beef, you could say, is that he had to add Pusha T, who was like protecting Kanye in a sense when Drake and Pusha had that beef. He had to add Pusha T to the conversation before he talked shit. That's like the equivalent of like a middle school like fight where you're like oh meet me on the basketball courts all right yeah i'll meet you on the basketball courts and then refuses to go to the basketball courts until like all your friends show up behind you and then once all your friends are behind you you start talking shit like you're some sort of tough guy all of a sudden like it's just it is it is just bad for Kanye out here in these streets bro bad 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 he's like uh he's like just like a middle school kid like a 13 year old like a 13 year old girl I just watched uh the Outer Banks I talked about it on the last uh episode episode of That's Fire and let me tell you what I may or may not have started it again just because I consumed it so fast and it has taken up my brain and my YouTube algorithm. My YouTube algorithm is literally like, oh, uh, Chase Stokes and Madeline Klein talk about kissing. Just because I watched like one or two interviews. Those, those, those kids have a fucking hold on the internet. It's fucked up. But it reminds me of uh, Kanye is like Wheezy, if you've seen Outer Banks. The little 13-year-old girl. He's, she's like the little sister of, of uh, Sarah Cameron who just tells everyone everything and is just a loose cannon. Like she has all this information told to her. Someone tells her and then she immediately just turns around and tells someone else. It's like, it it kind of just reminds me of like a little girl. So then after that, Kanye, this dude posts a screenshot of a map of Toronto that has like that shows like where drake lives like almost showing drake's address which is like kind of public knowledge because believe it or not i've actually driven in front of drake's house (laughs) i did a road trip through canada like two or three summers ago with my cousin uh shout out bo bowman and um we spent like a couple of days in Toronto. We saw Nas and Lauren Hill at like the Budweiser Amphitheater on the water. If you know where that is, if you've ever been to Toronto, just like a scene, a scene. And um, Drake and my cousin somehow like knew the neighborhood that Drake lived in, right? It's, a, it's, pro- it's just like some real rich ass neighborhood. So we drove around the neighborhood like looking for to see if we could tell which one Drake's house was. Cause at this point he had just bought it and was, it was under construction. It wasn't even finished yet. So I don't know, it may have been 2016 or 17. So like now that I think about it, like a decent 
like a decent uh, amount of time ago, like five years, maybe four years. But um, but we we drove by and there were several houses under construction. We're like, is that one it? It's like, no, it's not big enough. Is this one it? No, it's not big enough. We're like, is this one it? Yes, I think that one's it. That one's got to be it, right? We've seen like so many constructed houses. That one's the biggest one, right? And then we turn the corner right after we see that one. And we just like jaws to like the fucking floor of the car. Like that is Drake's house. That is fucking Drake's house. It was the biggest by far and had a literal fucking like giant like cyclops looking dude like in a car sitting outside like security and it was like okay this dude is security for a construction site uh yeah this is drake's house so i so i can say for the record uh that i have been to drake's house just want that on the on the record um but yeah kanye tweets out this motherfucker like a maps of it um and Drake were like reply, not replies directly, but replies, um, whatever, subtweet, subtweetedly to the motherfucking Kanye uh, in his Instagram stories of him like laughing, like an evil laugh too, a laugh that I would not want to see if I was Kanye. There is one hundred percent going to be a song whenever Certified Lover Boy comes out of of um drake like he's just gonna destroy kanye i think but um this is looking bad for kanye and i know i'm a drake fan i'm a drake fan through and through always have been i love and respect everything that kanye has done i think he hasn't put out a good album in several years um i think he is his mental health gets in the way of things, which makes his like criticism of him very uh, controversial. But when you put yourself out there like this and like try to go at people and say like, I'm, I'm going to ruin you or whatever he said to Drake, like you got to you, like you, it's coming, like it's coming for you. Like, I think Drake is going to fucking murder Kanye. And now Kanye, like, I don't know what he's trying to do because now the expectations for this album are even higher now that you got Drake involved. They were high, like as soon as he said he was dropping Donda, expectations through the roof, obviously. And then you get the album pushed back. It's like, okay, it's going to sound better. Expectations get a little higher. But simultaneously, people become a little disinterested. Pushes his back again. Okay, album better sound like now it's like pressure more than expectations. Like, okay, this shit better sound good. And then not only that, you're still like kind of pissing off your own fans who are like waiting for this album. Like I I didn't give a fuck after he pushed it back the first time, honestly. And then I said a couple of weeks ago, I think on the podcast, I was like, it's not coming out. No way it's coming out. And I'm not fully convinced that it's even coming out this week. Honestly, I think that uh, he might like do some shit, but I don't know. I feel like there's more pressure on Kanye than Drake. Drake because Drake's Drake shit is going to bang regardless. Regardless of anything that happens. And Drake could have. Drake could also go the route like where he doesn't even mention it on his album because he doesn't give a fuck. And then like, if he does more numbers than Kanye and doesn't even mention him, that's a bad look for Kanye because he just completely ignored him and, and just simultaneously destroyed him. I mean, uh, but the fact that the Kanye is like technically a year, but, a, but a year and some change, but, if we cancel out last year's Don to release and we say this week, this year's Don to release, he's, he's a month removed from the original release date. Like let's put it out. He should be putting it out. And the week of the, of said third release, like he's just talk. He's texting Drake, empty threats. He's like posting his address on Instagram. I mean, Drake is in Kanye's kitchen. 
I had a tweet earlier. Drake is in Kanye's kitchen mentally, and that would be hilarious if Drake showed up and was physically in Kanye's kitchen because Kanye's building his old home in, in the soldier field for the fucking release party. Like, I wanted to, when I was doing some research, I also wanted to, like, kind of get the whole story of it, right? Because I knew that, like, Drake had taken shots at him before, and Kanye is just a crazy person, but I wanted to see the whole thing, and um, I found some article on NME like a timeline of their beef but this was an article that was written for uh the whole three years ago the Pusha T and drake beef and i was like this timeline will work up until like because up until recently this is like what what had to happen but um what i basically got from it was like to start it all off the reason that this is even significant in the first place is because drake like when he was first getting started in like oh nine in an interview said that kanye shaped a lot of what he did as an, as a musical artist and like he has the most respect for kanye and he said i'd even go as far to say that kanye is the most influential person as far as a musician that i'd ever had in my life which is huge, like a huge sentiment for a guy who is who was just named the Billboard Artist of the Decade. Last 10 years was Drake's decade, right? Um, and then in another interview a couple of years later, he said, um, when I was a kid trying to figure out what I liked, it was Kanye that I related to the most. As an artist in every sense, from his cover art to his music, he was an artist and he said um now he's a really good competitor and friend at the same time my goal is to surpass everything he's accomplished i don't want to be as good as kanye i want to be better this is 2011 drake so let's say 10 years ago he was 24 and drake was my age so yeah i mean that sounds about right like the young um hungry driven artist that drake is um talking about how he wants to surpass Kanye I don't see anything wrong with that actually but apparently Kanye did you know like this is all the epitome of um Drake's song thank me now and he goes your idols become your rivals like Drake just talked that into fruition like Kanye was one of Drake's idols and now uh they're like in a fucking massive beef I want Kanye to make a diss track. I know that's not Kanye's thing. Kanye can get all the ghost writers he wants. Um, I know Drake probably will, <laughs> for being honest. But uh, Kanye can get all the people he wants. Pusha T can write it for him. And I think Drake will still destroy him. I just think Drake has way too much ammo on Kanye. Like, there's rumors that Drake fucking fucked Kim. <sighs> But so there was like, but let me talk about this timeline, right? There was that phase where Drake was just talking about how Kanye is his idol. And then afterwards, Drake, there's a series of examples where Drake takes shots at Kanye just in his rap, in his, in his lyrics, which as a rapper, you know, if they're friends, I, I see why you wouldn't do it. I don't know if they were ever, but I don't know if they were ever really like friends, friends, just by the way that this reads out. So in I'm on one with DJ Khaled, Drake said, I'm just feeling like the throne is for the take and watch me take it. She could say it was a shot at watch the throne, which had just came out uh, summer 16 is when he was talking about Kanye's pool talking shit about Kanye's pool when they lived in the same hood. He's like, now I got a house in LA and I got a bigger pool than Ye. And look, man, Ye's pool is nice. Mine's just bigger is what I'm saying. <laughs> oh my God, which is just so fucking funny. Like, listen, man, Kanye's pool is nice. Mine is bigger though. 
yeah yeah that's one of those like trolls that you just can never recover from i'm surprised that it didn't end kanye's career to be quite honest and then uh (laughs) this article said that kanye replied or responded i have three pools (laughs) Which is when, you know, the pool stuff really got in. And then the Drake pushes shit. Like, people say that Pusha T won that. I refuse to believe so because after uh, that, Drake went on to continue to be artist of the decade and Pusha T went on to be the most forgettable person ever. Um, I think Drake had a sick-ass freestyle. Definitely took shots at Kanye and Pusha. I think he said Pusha was like not even like top five talent on his own label, which, you know, I mean, I don't know. That's pretty, pretty good. Uh, pretty fucking accurate. Pusha D, who the fuck are you, buddy? Hey, look at I got these hairs that just like. It's what happens when you switch barbers a lot. Like, and I don't know a lot about my hair to begin with. I know that it's good, though. I mean, look at this. But uh, sometimes I, it's hard to tell when it splits. See? When it splits. So I got to keep, like, fixing it and shit. But anyway, um, Push's response was just so personal that I get why Drake didn't respond. He didn't want to get any more grittier, grimier than, than that because – Pusha T was talking about Drake's mom, Drake's dad, revealed that Drake's baby was out, who Kanye fucking told him that, like, Kanye was the one that gave him that information. Like, uh, just, like, dirty, 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 like, shit. Like, and then Pusha T was also talking about Drake's producer, 40, Noah Shabib. She has sclerosis, I believe. And just talking about talking shit about that, just taking like real shots, like push a T as a guy who had absolutely nothing to lose because really no one gives two shits about him. Obviously came at Drake very crazy and people thought that push a T won that. I don't know. I'm not like if push a T really was did what he wanted to do, which was to like end Drake. Uh, then he would have won. But obviously, you just can't end Drake. So no matter what you say, you little clown-ass pussy, push a T, you're a bitch. Um, unbiased Drake fan here. Motherfucker. Um, you're just not going to end Drake, right? Fucking A. So he revealed that Drake had a son, whatever. And Kanye's collaborator, Malik Youssef, implied in an interview that Wes had heard March 14th song where Drake admitted he had a son. And, you know, when you put two and two together, you know, Kanye fucking told him that. Kanye's a bitch, man. Kanye is just a soft ass bitch. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just honestly sad it really is because i don't want to take sides i don't want to and if anyone knows me knows that i'm all about peace peace love happiness you know i don't like when people uh i don't like war i don't like war but kanye you're trying to start a war that is not gonna end well for you i mean what is this you will never recover, I promise you. Like, that takes this from Drake talking shit about Kanye's pool, talking about how his album release date is not is set in stone, to, you know, you will never recover. I mean, if imagine if Kanye doesn't put out the album this week and waits again that just proves that Drake is in his kitchen. It is really sad, really fucking sad. And I think as a Drake fan, I've done a great job at telling you as an unbiased person uh, that Drake owns uh, three pools in Kanye's head as well as Oceanfront property, as well as 
uh, real estate, all real estate ever. So, and I don't even think he wants that real estate if we're being honest, <laughs> but he had stuck with it. You get stuck with real estate that you don't want sometimes when you're, when you're that, when you're that guy. So, um, yes, I look like a mafia kingpin. No, I am not, uh, telling this in any, any sense of, uh, you know, other than the truth, this is just truthfully from, from a, from the non-biased biased Drake fan. This is the truth. This is the way. And that is fucking that. Um, so with that being said, that's it for, for me. I mean, I gave my whole Drake spiel, you know, the, you know, you know, the vibes, you know, where we stand in this motherfucker and can't wait for certified lover boy. Don't give a shit about Donda. I'm sure we'll have a couple good tracks because Kanye is Kanye, but he's an unhinged man who wants to, who says Drake will never recover. Um, uh, he's posting pictures of Drake's fucking house. Of... And that's it, man. I think, I mean, from the most unbiased, biased Drake person ever, Drake owns Kanye, owns him, owns him, owns him, owns him, owns him, owns him, owns him. Kanye West is a uh, poo poo head stinky head and that's fire baby kanye's running a fire fest on all you fans out there all you kanye fans kanye is running the damn fire fest literally that's that's fire with a y what kanye is doing to you we know it's fire with an i what drake is about to put out if he decides to use his song going at kanye and certified love boy but Again, from me to you, not a Coke dealer, um, just a man trying to make a living. That's fire, baby. Episode seven. Take care. Peace and love. See you next uh, episode.